My friends at Redotto just sent me their new 140 amp hour Group 31 lithium iron phosphate battery that not only features low temperature charge protection, but also has a really cool app. You can monitor the voltage, the current, the temperature of the battery, and it's currently going for $279.99, but with the referral link in the description, viewers of Ham Radio Tube can save 6% off by using code HRT at checkout. Let's take a look at it this time on Ham Radio Tube. So here's a look, the Redotto 12.8 volt smart battery, low temperature charge protection, Bluetooth 5.0. We've got, they make it really easy to download the app. You've got a QR code right here. You can just scan it with your phone and that'll bring you to either the App Store or the Google Play Store. And once you download the app, you do need to make an account. Um, Apple says they don't use any tracking information whatsoever, so that makes me happy. Um, and I can understand making an account. You, you know, it, if somebody else has an app, they could come over and mess with your battery. So I guess that kind of makes it secure because um, you do tie it into your app. And you can either scan this QR code once you open the app, and that will connect the battery to your phone. Or you can simply search it uh, with Bluetooth, which is what I did, and it connected seamlessly, no problem. But let's take a look at the specs. Nominal voltage, 12.8 volts, rated capacity, 140 amp hours. I did do a capacity test on this right when I got it. I pulled 147.86 amp hours out of it. So we do get the actual rated capacity. Rated energy, 1,792 watt hours. Charging voltage, 14.4 volts, plus or minus 0.2 volts and a max continuous charge and discharge current of 140 for charging and 150 for discharging. Max continuous output power, 1920 watts. So we're gonna test all that. Now, one thing I wanna point out, and this is kind of a trend that I'm seeing in some of these Chinese batteries. If we take a look at the specs, the surge discharge current is 700 amps for one second. That's fine if you've got a really beastly machine that is pulling a huge startup current. My question is, what is the actual overcurrent protection on this? I suspect we're not gonna be able to get this to shut off with overcharge protection. I can pull uh, a little under 300 amps, so we're gonna charge that, but um, I'm curious about that. Other than that, the battery seems tip top. It's got a nice, Strap here for carrying. I like when they put these straps on here that you can remove because not everybody wants a strap and certain applications don't require a strap so you can get rid of it. But um, let's hook this up to the inverter and see what it can do. So while we brew some coffee, I figured we'd take a look at the app, but first we need to turn the system on, turn our inverter on, and turn the coffee maker on. So you can see we open the app. It should just connect. Hopefully, we'll see. Maybe not. Let's just touch it, connect. Sometimes it connects automatically, sometimes it doesn't, but uh, it does connect. So there we are, we can see uh, we're not pulling any power. There we are, 13.9 watts. Helps if we turn the coffee maker on. 1500 watts there, 116 amps. And we're showing 121 on my amp meter here, so close enough. As our water heats up, got some nice espresso. Perfect day for doing this. We had snow in Texas last night. So, okay, so this is heated up now. And let's do two cups of espresso. Maybe it's not heated up yet. There we are. Fifteen hundred watts, one hundred and twenty-three amps. And there we are. It's working. It is doing the thing. Hopefully, this coffee will be hot. So we can see the capacity going down, the discharging, how long we have at this current rate. So if we kept this up, we could brew coffee for an hour and ten minutes. That's great. And now our coffee's done. Let's see if battery-powered coffee is any good. Cheers, guys. Oh, yeah. It's good, it's hot, it's flavorful, it's rich, it's robust. We just made coffee with a battery. That's pretty awesome. What else can we do? 
So that's not too shabby. We just made coffee, 1500 watts. It used all of 2% of the battery. So that's pretty good. And I definitely hit make coffee again. So I added another, another uh, brew to this. Um, so there's actually two pushes of that button. I only hit a single cup. But if you're camping and you're a big coffee nerd, I like espresso, so that's why I had an espresso machine. You could be literally sitting at your campsite making coffee off of a battery. That's pretty awesome. But we're not here to watch me drink coffee. We're here to test the battery. That 700 amps really kind of scares me. So I'm just gonna turn on everything I have and I wanna see if, if we can get this to trip with overcurrent charge protection, because I, I kind of have a feeling there isn't any. So we're just, we're just gonna go for it. We're gonna ramp up the current here with the heater. I got the, I got the vacuum here with one last part, and we got the heat gun. So we're pulling 89 amps now. This is showing 90, so close enough. Turn on the vacuum. Now we're at 188 amps. Pulling 2,000 watts. Let's kick the heat gun on low. Look at that. That just shut off around 230 amps. That is fantastic, Redoto. You did it. That is freaking awesome. I was not expecting that. We actually have overcurrent protection in this that works at a reasonable current rate. I'm really excited. <laughs> we have a safe battery, ladies and gentlemen. All right. The inverter turned back on, so the battery reset itself. It's in standby. Let's do that one more time. Let's do that one more time. Let's wait for the heater to kick on. The vacuum. Heat gun on low. 2600 watts on the inverter, 235 amps, and it just shuts off right away. Right away. Fantastic. Redodo, good job. So now that we know the battery actually works, let's take a little bit better look at this app. There, there's honestly not much to this app. What we're seeing right now, I got the, I got the space heater on behind me, pulling 1100 watts, 86 amps. We can monitor the voltage, 13 volts. We've got 139.2 amp hours left over. Down here, we've got balance. So it says all cells are balanced. The cells, the battery is in optimal condition and the BMS is working normally. I wish there was a way other than just kind of blindly believing the app when it says the cells are balanced. It'd be nice if we could actually see the individual cell voltages so we actually know they are uh, balanced. But, and then under battery info, if we swipe up, whoops. It's, it's kind of a weird, you gotta swipe up, there we are. We can see the device name so we can tap on this and we can like rename this if we want. So let's call this Redodo 140, confirm that. So now the battery has a name. You got the serial number there. You can see the internal temperature of the battery is 77 degrees. We've put it through three cycles so far. This is actually the third cycle. And then you have the firmware version. Let's hit device controls. Here's something really cool where you kind of get into like the safety of this. You've got the discharge function. Before turning off the discharge function, remove connected terminal devices to avoid interfering with their use. So basically what that means, let me turn these things off here. For safety, for like transport and stuff, I'm gonna turn discharge off. So now discharge is off. So when I go to turn on the inverter, it shouldn't turn on and it's not. It's beeping because it's like, I don't have any volts here and now it's off. So that was just the residual voltage like in the capacitors or something. So there's no discharge going from the battery, okay? We can turn it back on, and now the inverter just turned back on, and now my space heater's back on. So that's really cool just for transport, just kind of turning it off. We can also like completely turn off the battery 100% uh, by using this turn off here at the bottom in kind of this orange color, and that will completely turn everything off which I don't want to do right now because then I'd have to get a charger out. You have, to, you have to hook it up to a charger to turn it back on when you do that. But um, those are some pretty nice features to have in a battery. I really like that you can just like, just safety. You want to turn stuff off, turn the battery off, say you're working on something, you know it's off. My inverter is beeping, crying for help for more voltage, and I'm going to have more coffee. So I really like that. I did a Bluetooth range test 
My house is approximately 40 feet long. This wall is the end wall on one side. I went all the way to the other side of my house. I could still pick up Bluetooth. I could pick it up a little bit outside my house, but that was kind of it. So I'm gonna say for me and my tests, about a 40 foot radius from the battery, which I would think like if you've got this battery in an RV or at a campsite, that should be plenty distance enough to be able to monitor the battery with Bluetooth uh, wherever you are around your campsite. So that's really cool. So uh, that's kind of it for the app. Uh, oh, battery system. Uh, we can add a battery system and then you can uh, do some other settings about you if you want. But really just this is kind of the main area that you're going to be playing in. So, you know, wanting to know what your battery is doing. So now we have a battery that has the rated capacity. It has overcurrent protection. They say it has low temperature charge protection and they've got an app that works very seamlessly. The only thing we have to test now is the low temperature charge protection. So I'm gonna put this in my freezer uh, and I'm gonna monitor the temperature on the app because that's what I think is most important. So I'm gonna put this in the freezer until it gets to like 30 degrees and then I'll hook it up to a charger and hopefully we will not charge the battery because the low temperature charge protection should be working. So uh, let's do that now. All right, well, we were at 30.2 degrees. It just changed. Um, so we're at 32 degrees right now, but I don't think this temperature is the most accurate because it was sitting at 32 degrees and then it went to 30.2 degrees and I literally just took it out. So let's plug in our charger, make sure it's off. And theoretically, it shouldn't charge. But it is. And it just shut off. So that's perfect. Low temperature charge protection works right at 32 degrees where the uh, thing says it's at. So yeah, fantastic. This battery does everything it's advertised to do and it all works and it's fantastic. So Rodoto, good job. Passes with flying carpets. And that is the review of the 140 amp hour smart battery from Rodoto. My name is Mike K at MRD. Thanks for watching Ham Radio 2. We'll see you next time, 73.